Continuing our series with the Simple Steps Raster and really opening up a whole new level of design in Corel Draw, taking our designs to that high-end level very easily, even if we're limited with our color presses. And you can see here I've got a number of different setups of a resort-style design for NASA. And I've got a spaceman with a space background here. And this would actually be a three-color print. So even if you're working with a four-color press, you can still, on light garments, print these high-end designs giving you a tremendous marketing advantage in your local market even though you're limited on colors. Now these designs would be five colors. This one here would actually be four colors because we use the blue of the garment. So you'd have red, you'd have black, I'll actually you got a cyan, so there's three, and you have a white base and a white highlight, but you'd use the blue of the garment and then we put the, sh the drop shadow behind the logo to bring that out. Here you'd have a white, blue, cyan, red, white highlight, white base, so you get up to six colors there here basically the same. But we're going to see in this session how we can use Simple Steps Raster to do everything from dealing with client supplied logo art to setting up high-end designs for our clients literally within a matter of minutes and then being able to separate those or set those up as pre-separated assets that we could just design with and then output our color separations through our RIP or directly through our Simple Steps plugin from advancedtshirts.com. We have two versions of Simple Steps. There's a simple steps that handles your vector color management and converts to halftones, so you don't have to have a rip. And there's the simple steps raster, and that's what we're working with in this session. And that's for working with raster supplied or client supplied images and things like that. In other words, bitmaps, JPEGs, etc. And you can set up some incredibly high designs very quickly and very easily working with Corel Draw and Simple Steps Raster. Let's take a look how we set this design up. I've got some media assets over here to the right. Here we've got the NASA logo. I have this spaceman, but I just vector traced around the outside of him and then I dressed him up a little bit in photo paint. And then I've got this space scene from the Hubble. To get started here, we'll go ahead and start with the NASA logo. And for that, I want to go ahead and open up photo paint and just do some cleanup work on this. So I'll go to bitmap, edit bitmap. Now, once I see this on my screen in photo paint, I can see that it's very clean. But if I zoom in, I'll see there's some issues I want to deal with. There's some anti-aliasing. And there is a little bit of artifacts or destruction from the JPEG, and I really don't want that when I'm trying to process this through simple steps. What I want to do is get this back to original blue, original red, original white, RGB colors, and no anti-aliasing. And that's very easy to do. I'll go ahead and start here with the fill bucket, and I'll have that set to white. And I'm going to have my tolerance set up around 82. Now, if I come here on the white, and I just click one time, you can see what happens. I get rid of that anti-aliasing. And I can do that on all of the white objects. Go right here, right here, go right here. And I want to make sure I got the S. Did I get the A? Yep, we got all of that. Now I'm going to want to come in here and just click all these other white objects make sure I get everything because I don't want to have anything that's not processed. So I'll just kind of, now you see I missed there. I want to hit Control Z and I want to get right on the tip there and hit that. Once again, I missed. So I'm going to have to zoom in now and make sure I get right on these. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm just knocking out the NAIC. Now there's a little bit of jag in here, but when you do all the colors, that's all going to go away. And when this prints out, it'll be as clean as vector. We just want to make sure we get all of these objects here. I'm going to come over here. Let's see if we can get this the first time here. No, nope, we're going to have to zoom in there. I'll just push my mouse wheel forward to zoom in. Just click that one time. I want to do the same here, the same here. And I missed that time. Hit Control Z, and we'll go there. And one, two, three, right there. This one, this one. Got this, got this, and got this. Let's zoom out and see what else we've got to deal with here. I'm going to go ahead and move this dock over just so I can zoom in and see and make sure I got everything here. And we need to get this here, this here, and this here. Now, as I said, this looks jaggy, but when you print it out, it's going to be just as clean as vector because you've got the resolution here. And we can go ahead and upsample this and even deal with this in other ways if we want to. You could do some masking and then smooth the mask, etc. But I'll just go ahead and click my way through here just to get all of these white objects and get all of this cleaned up and ready to go. Now, once I've gotten all the white, we'll kind of scroll around here and make sure we got everything, and we did. Next thing I want to do is deal with the red. So I'm simply going to come over here and double click on my fill and I'm going to go to edit. I want to be in the uniform palette and I want to come over here to red. Now this is 
R255, so that's solid red for the IGB. So when we run that through Simple Steps RAS, we're going to get 100% black for this red. Select OK, select OK. With my fill tool again, come in here and I'll click here, 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 and here. And I think that's all of it. Yeah, and we got everything there. So now we've got rid of all that anti-aliasing. And then for the blue, I'm just going to do the same. I'll double click here, go to edit. I'm going to come up here and get my blue 255. That's going to be 100% black when it comes through Simple Slips Raster if it's a blue 255. Click here, 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 and just work my way through here, getting all of this blue converted to, and you see I missed that time. We'll zoom in here, and then click here, and we got there, and we got there. So now I've got everything except for right here, everything set up so that I don't have any anti-aliasing. This is going to be a left chest, so it doesn't really matter. Next thing I'll do is go ahead and save this file. Actually, I've got one more step to go. I've got to knock out the background here. I want a transparent background. Set that up very easy. I'll come over here and get my magic wand tool. Go ahead and click here, and I'm going to click down here also. I'm going to go and take a look to see if we got any anti-aliasing there whatsoever. Now, you'll notice that I'm going to get anti-aliasing when I knock this out, and I don't want that, but I want to show you that here. I'm going to go over here and change this from a background to an object. Make sure i got a masking tool selected and I'll hit delete. And you'll see that what I did there is I did create some anti-aliasing because when I did my magic wand tool, I'm going to hit control Z and control Z, control Z, control Z. I had my anti-aliasing turned on. I want to turn that off and then select this and you'll see what we're getting here. Now there is some peripheral damage here on the outside, but I can deal with that. I don't want to select that. I want to bring my tolerance up quite a bit. And we'll click, and then you can see we're going pixel for pixel here. And all of this extra information that was created in the JPEG compression will be removed from the graphic. Go down here to the other side, do the same. Now I've got everything selected. Got my magic wand tool selected, and I hit delete. Oh, we got to change this back to an object. Hit delete. And that knocks out the background. Now, if I didn't have a masking tool selected and I hit delete, I'd actually delete the object instead of the background. I'm going to go to Mask, Remove here. Then we'll go ahead and save this, and then we'll close Photo Paint. So now I've got my NASA logo prepped, be color separated, going through Simple Steps Raster. I didn't have to vector trace that. And this is going to be going at a left chat size and it's set up currently at 362 dpi which is more than sufficient as I said you do see some jag there but you can see it's very minor And when you actually print that out at a left chest size it's going to look as clean as vector and we set that up without going through the steps of vectorizing it so we'll go ahead and save this over here my next step would be to vector trace around my spaceman here I wouldn't do that in this video I've got other training about how to vector trace and then power clip that right inside of my vector trace and I basically masked it out. Now at this point I'm going to make him quite a bit bigger because he's only about five inches now. I want to go ahead and rasterize him and separate him and bring him back in as a design asset. I got him set up at about, I'll also get him set up at about 12 inches right there and then I'm just going to go bitmaps and I'm going to select convert to bitmap. I'm going to go with RGB. I'm not going to have anti-aliasing but I am going to have a transparent background. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to let that process. And then I'm going to touch him up a little bit. I'm going to go to Edit Bitmap and I'm going to open him up in Photo Paint. I'm just going to run a touch of Smart Blur on him just to kind of clean up some of the things that are remnants of the JPEG compression process, which you can see quite a bit of that in here. Plus, I want to make him look a little bit artistic, something, that, something like he was painted. So go to Effects. I'm going to go to Blur. And I'm going to go to Smart Blur. Now I kind of want to zoom in here and see what's going on when I do this effect on him and let that process. You can see the difference in how that cleans that up. It's quite amazing actually. It does clean up a lot of the remnants that you get from the JPEG process. I want to take a look at his legs and make sure we're not losing too much detail there. And I can see that and we're not losing much detail there at all. So I'll go ahead and select OK and we'll let that process. Now sometimes I'll upsample these to like 800 dpi and run that but you can see that cleaned him up quite a bit I'm going to go to adjust and I'm also going to hit auto balance here just to kind of tighten that up a little bit 
And I think what I want to do is darken him up. There's a lot of light areas of shade in here. Some of it might not hold well if you're on a four color press and you really don't have the equipment. But if you're going with higher end equipment, it will work. But you can make a little adjustment that can make a big difference. I'm going to go to adjust here and I'm going to take out a bunch of colors. I'm going to bring it down to just white, red, and black. So I'm going to go to hue, saturation, and brightness. Now the only colors I want are red, white, and black. So I'm going to go to my yellow and I'm going to take my lightness to there. You can see that has an effect on that lightness. But what I want to do is take this saturation and change that to a grayscale. Same thing with the greens in there. Bring that down. The cayennes, I want to bring those into a gray. The blues, I'm going to bring into a gray. You can see I'm not really losing anything in here. And then the magentas, I'm going to bring into a gray also. But you can see the effect that has on the image. Now if I turn off preview, you can see what I'm doing is I'm taking a lot of those colors out and converting them to gray so that it'll come out in the black, working with the hue, saturation, and lightness. So all I'm going to have is red, black, and white left in him after I process this. So I'm not going to get other colors in my separations. Then I can bring the tonal values of those colors that I changed the saturation on into my black screen for the shading. I'm going to select OK. One more thing I'm going to go to adjust tone curve. And I'm just going to make him a little bit darker. Select OK. And then he's good to go. So all I've got here now is basically red white and black. I've saturated all the other colors out. I'll go ahead and save. And then I'll go ahead and close Photo Paint. And now I'm going to turn him into a pre-separated design asset in Corel Draw. I'm going to do that by running him through Simple Sets Raster. And then I'm going to use him as a pre-separated asset. Let's take a look at how we do that. I'm going to go to Advanced Tools, Simple Sets Raster. And first thing I'll do actually here is I'll go ahead and save because if I have any problems I don't want to lose the graphics. So I'll go ahead and save and we'll let that process. Once that's finished the next thing I want to do is make sure I've got my Spaceman selected and I want to go to HSB Extract and we'll process that. Once that's finished processing I'll go ahead and minimize my plug. I'm going to zoom out because he got extracted over here in the identical place he was in any other document and I can see what I've got here. And what we've got is we've got some red, which that's going to be just fine. And we've got a couple of different colors. I want to go here and take a look at the object manager. I'm going to turn off my brightness. I'm going to turn off my saturation. I'm going to look at my colors here. You can see I've got a little bit of yellow in here, which I'll go ahead and take that out after we separate. And some of this red that's in here, that'll be just fine. It's not going to make that much of a difference because when we bring our hue and saturation in, that'll be just fine. Some of that red would actually be in a, a reflection of the light that's around him and the colors that are coming out in him. So I'm going to be happy with this. And once I've gotten to this stage, I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm just going to go ahead and process my separations. So I'll go ahead and generate separations here. And we'll let that process. Once I finish processing the separations, I'll go ahead and close my plugin. And we're going to take a look at our colors here and what's going on with our final separation. Now I can see that all I'm going to need is the white base, the white highlight, the black, and the red. So I'm not going to need my cyan. I'm not going to need green. I'm going to need the red. I'm not going to need blue. And all I've got left is a little bit of red, black, and white here. So I'm down to really three colors. If I was printing on a white garment, I'd be down to two colors, red and black. I'm going to take with me to crop out this into a design asset. I'm going to take with me the white underbase, the white highlight, which you can see there, and the black. And that's all I'm really going to need. So I'm not going to need the yellow, so I'm not going to take that as you can see right there. Now looking at what happened in our red here, we picked up a lot of stuff from the JPEG compression of this. So I think I'm going to deal with that after I go ahead and crop this out. But that'll be very easy to do. 
going to go ahead and just left click here with the crop tool and I'm just going to bring this down to here. I want to make sure I don't crop any of my graphic out and we're going to convert this separation into a design asset in CorelDRAW. So I'll double click here. Hopefully I had everything selected. I don't remember if I did or not. If not, I'll just hit Control Z. And we'll let that crop process. And sure enough, I had everything selected. So I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to go to a new document. I'm going to select OK and I'm going to do some work on him here in a less complicated object manager. Go ahead and paste in. Uh, he went in where he was, which was over there, but I'll bring him over here on the page. I'm going to go here. I know that, well, we've got magenta here. I know I don't need that, so I want to go ahead and delete that. And that got rid of a lot of color there. Now here in the red, if we look at the white highlight and turn that off, we can see we got some red in here. You could keep that or you could get rid of it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. So what I'll do here on the red is I'll go back to my simple SEPS raster and I'm just going to convert that back to a grayscale. And I'll just go with a monochrome revert. Go ahead and minimize this. And then I'm going to take this red monochrome right here, which is now a grayscale. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to go to Edit Bitmap and I'm going to open that up in Photo Paint. I just want to get rid of a lot of that red that's floating around that really doesn't have any purpose in the background. Just a little clean up here. And my image will open up here in Photo Paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And we can see we got quite a bit of red in here in different places. And our white highlight would actually get rid of a lot of that. But what I'll do is I'm just going to do something simple here. I'm going to zoom in here on this NASA logo because I'm going to need that. I'm going to go over here to my freehand masking tool and I'm just going to come right around the outside of this kind of like this. There would be some reflection there but I'll just come right around the outside of this just double click here and I'm going to go to additive mode and I'm going to come down here around the legs where we know we're going to need that red and I'll just come around here and we'll come up this way here and we want to keep all of this red in here I'm pretty certain double click here actually I want to go to subtractive mode actually, I'm in subtractive mode I want to be in additive mode I want to just come in this way here and just come around this and we'll just come around this way here and we'll double click here and then I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'll go ahead and come in this way here. I want to see what I'm doing here. We'll double click there and we'll do more of the same down here. And we'll bring this down this way here and we'll double click here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to mask invert. I'm going to go with mask overlay also. Mask invert here. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this other data that was in the red. I'm going to go to mask remove and then I'll go ahead and save this. Now if I wanted to I could do some more cleanup here with the eraser and really get rid of everything. It would take me about five minutes to do that. But for the sake of the tutorial I'm not going to. And actually having a little bit of red in there I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Because when you print your white and your black it's going to cover most of it up. Now go ahead and close this. We'll close photo paint. And we'll go back here and we'll go back to our simple steps and we'll go to a monochrome convert. I want to make sure we've got this red monochrome selected here which is our grayscale, the right image. Monochrome convert, we'll let that process. One of the things you do want to do is you want to make sure that you close photo paint before you run this because it can cause a conflict trying to run this if you have photo paint open and it could crash it. Okay, once that's done I'll go ahead and close this. Right click and we'll change that to a red. I'm going to bring that back behind the highlight white as you can see right there and I think that'll be just fine. Plenty clean enough. I'm going to click this one time. I'm going to change the word bitmap to red so I know what this is. And then I can go ahead and I can group this. Go ahead and hit control C and I'll go back to my original design where I was working. 
and I'll go ahead and hit Control V here and we'll paste that in. Now you can see what I've got is I've got a spaceman that is a pre-separated design asset. And if I wanted to, I could put him back into my power clip if I really wanted to and have him power clipped out and yet be a design asset, maybe just like a piece of vector, except he's high-end, pre-separated, photographic or artistic design asset in Corel Draw. So you can imagine where you can go with this when having these design assets set up. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to save now that I'm at this point. And I'm going to want to pull some stars out of here to get some effects for the stars in the background. I'll do that very easily. And we'll use our monochrome reverb for that and we'll very quickly set up a design asset which consists of some very photorealistic looking stars that we can put in the background behind our spaceman once we finish processing this save. Go ahead and zoom in here and see what we're looking at. We've got some different stars in here. And I'm going to go ahead and do some adjustments in this in Photo Paint also. So I'm going to go to Bitmap, Edit Bitmap, and we'll open that also up in Corel Photo Paint. Go ahead and maximize this, and then we'll go ahead and zoom out. And I'm just going to get a paintbrush at this point in time. I'll come over here to my paintbrush, and I've already got this set up at about 1200. I want to change the color to black here. Bring this over to a black and select OK. And all I'm going to do is if I just touch here, I'm going to start softening up the edges and just giving myself a space of the stars that I'm going to be able to knock out effectively. And we can see that right here. And I'll go ahead and just knock those two right out. And the same thing over here. Now if I wanted to, I could spend some real time and pull out individual stars and really set up some incredible design assets here. But for the sake of the tutorial, I won't bother with that at the moment. And we're going to bring this out here just so that we don't have anything kind of floating around out here that's going to get to a point where it's cut off or it doesn't look very natural when we're working with the stars. Now here, what I want to do is I want to darken this up a little bit, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image, Mode, and I'm going to convert to a grayscale, and you'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute. Select OK. Let that process. And I'm going to go to Adjust and Tone Curve, and I'm going to darken this up a little bit. So I'm going to just bring this back, get rid of some of the haze in the background here, as you can see right there. And I could actually darken this up quite a bit something like that there. But I don't want to lose all of my lighter colors. Let's see what we can do here. And you can really just call it by eye if you want to, but I'll select OK right here at this point. won't be identical to the one we had set up. I'm going to tap right there, but it'll be very close. Go ahead and save, and we'll take that back into Draw. I'm going to go ahead and close Photo Paint. just want to make sure that finishes processing first. And I'll go ahead and take this and I'm going to go ahead and crop this just like this here, making sure I don't cut anything off. Double click here. And then I'll take this and I'll go to Effects, Transform, and Invert. Now you can see that I've got my stars here. The next step for me is very simple. I'm going to go to Advanced Tools, Simple Steps Raster, and I'm going to do a monochrome convert on this and just convert it to a monochrome asset. Go to Monochrome Convert, and that'll take just a minute to process. And here I've got a really cool stars asset set up. And you'll notice that if I go ahead and put a, actually at this point I'm going to go ahead and bring a t-shirt comp in. I'll go to Advanced Tools, Design Base. I'm going to bring this in as a full front. Don't want to have anything selected when I do that. I'm just going to bring it right into my workspace. And we'll go ahead and set this up as a dark garment that we can start to set our design up. I really like to design on garments. It gives me a much, much better feel for what the actual garment is going to look like. I'm going to convert that to a 80% black. I'm going to take this shading on top and I'm going to go to bitmaps. I'm going to change that from a monochrome to an RGB. It just looks better that way on dark. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this stars here and then right click for a white color and you can see the effect that I'm getting. Just looks absolutely photorealistic. Great effect. Going to make a great design and I'll be able to work with my pre-separated design assets quite easily. Over here is my 
Which one is it? Is that one or is it this one? It's this one here, group of four objects. Duplicate that on there. And then you can see here we are. We've been working less than 20 minutes. We've just got a totally off the wall design with different design assets set up. And then we've got our spaceman here. Now, at this point, what I think I want to do is go ahead and separate my NASA logo and turn that into an asset also. I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'll bring it over here so it's on the page just so I'll get on the center of the other page. And I'm just going to go, you know, so you've got 362 DPI. That's going to be more than sufficient. I'm going to go to my Simple Steps raster. I'm going to go to HSB Extract, and we'll go ahead and pull that apart. And that'll be processed for us. That's a bit of a smaller image, so it'll process quite a bit quicker. It's set up just about left chest size, about 4.5 inches wide, and that'll be fine. And because the image is small, it'll process much faster through the HSB and all through, through the separation. So we'll go ahead and let this process. Once that's finished, we'll take a look at what we got for results here. I'm going to turn off my, not going to need any black, not even going to need the saturation with this. But you can see we just got a nice clean pull of our hue here. So this is going to be perfect. Now before I proceed, I'm going to need to have these turned on. If I don't have these turned on, my separations aren't going to process correctly. I the HSB has to be enabled and nothing else can be enabled or you'll get a crash or a problem in your separation process. But I'll go ahead and go back to Simple Seps raster and I'm going to go ahead and generate my separations. Once that's finished processing, I'll go ahead and take a look at my color separations and we can see that they came out absolutely flawless. It looks like there's a little white peak in there but there really isn't. It's just kind of pixel for pixel but if I want to I could choke that back. At this point I know that the only colors I'm going to need are going to be my blue. I'm going to need my white underbase. I'll turn off my background. I'm not going to need that. I'm not going to need the yellow. I'm not going to need the green. I'm not going to need the cyan. I'm not going to need the magenta. I don't think I'm going to need a white highlight. Well, actually I might, so we'll go ahead and keep that. Um, looking at my black, I'm not going to need that. I'll turn that off. So we've got all the colors that we need here. Now I'm going to take this and then I'll go ahead and crop this. Now I want to go ahead and select all of this actually. I'll go ahead and select everything here. And then we'll just go ahead and crop it all. Okay, I'm going to go in my workspace, select everything. There we go. I've got everything else turned off. I've got my white base got my blue, got my red, got my white highlight. Go ahead and select everything here. Option cannot completed. The active layer black is locked or invisible. Okay, so where's the black that's giving me an issue? Uh, it's because I'm on the black layer. I need to get on, okay, I need to get on the white highlight later. That's our issue there. Let's go ahead here and we'll go ahead and crop this now. If you're on a layer that's inactive, when you try to select and crop, it won't work because the layer is deactivated. Now I'll go ahead and click this. And here's my NASA logo set up with my base, my yellow, excuse me, my blue, my red, and my white. And I didn't have to take that to vector. I'll go ahead and group this and I'll hit Control C. And now this will also be another design asset that I can use in laying out my design. I'll go ahead and paste this in. And we'll bring this over here to our garment where we're going to set it up as a left chest. Go ahead and resize here. And I'll go ahead and mirror my spaceman here, as you can see there. Or I could just rotate it in the other way. Now, looking at this, you can see the type of effect I'm getting here very quickly. We've only been working on this 20 minutes. And look at look at the design. Set up in Simple Seps raster and turned into design assets as we can work with and Corel Draw and start to create layouts with. One thing I want to do is show you that if you want to choke your white base after you set something up like this up, you can do that very easily. Let's go ahead and ungroup here. And I'm going to go down through to the white base. So I'm going to go hold down Alt and I'm going to go down. No, I didn't want to do that. I just moved that out of alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back until we move it again. Okay, now Shift Control Z. I'm going to go to ungroup. If I click here, I can see over here in the object manager, here's my white base. I'm going to right click and change that to a black. 
Now, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to go to bitmaps. Actually, I want to do a monochrome revert here, and then we'll just do that in Photo Paint. Actually, that's what I'll do. Go to Advanced Tools, Simple Steps Raster. I'm going to do a monochrome revert here. Select OK. I'm going to go to Bitmaps, and I'll make sure I've got him selected. Under Base White, he is a grayscale. Bitmaps, I'm going to go to Edit Bitmap. That'll open him up in Corel Photo Paint. I'm just going to knock him back a few pixels with the mask. You can see he's 100% black. I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to get my Magic Wand tool. Now I'll just go ahead and select this, and I'm just going to go to Mask. I'm at 300 DPI. If I go to Mask Outline, and I go to Expand, and I take that back two or three pixels, you'll see what happens here. We've just choked back a hair. If I'm on a masking tool and I hit Delete, I'll knock that back. I'll go to Mask, Remove, and then I can go ahead and save that. And I've just choked that because that's solid. I want that to be like a solid vector. If I want to choke my base, I can do that. I simply go to Bitmaps, Mode, and we'll just change this to a monochrome here, black and white. Select OK. Left click to knock out our white background. And we'll go ahead and change that to a white there so that we've got a white base set up as an actual white. We'll go ahead and group that again, and then that's prepped. I'll go ahead and delete this one, and I'll bring this one over here. Now I can start to really lay out any of that. It looks like there's some white peak in there, but there isn't. It's just the way that Corel renders that, as you can see there. So there's my left chest. Here is my NASA spaceman floating in space with the stars set up behind him. I'll hold down Alt, and we'll move some of those around. Hold down Alt here, and we'll bring some of these other stars over here. And we can rotate these and just kind of set these up whatever way we want them to be, whatever way we think they're going to look best. And I'll go here and I'll hold down Alt again. That'll name me to select that other monochrome bitmap, and I'll bring these stars over here like that. Now, once I've set up this layout, very easy for me to set up multiple layouts. I'll go ahead and duplicate here. And let's say we're limited on colors. We want to do a one-color design. Hold down Alt. I'll change this to a white. Now, this shading is kind of hard, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'll go over here to a transparency and I'll go to uniform and that'll just make it look brighter like an actual white. Now to set up my effect for the stars all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down alt here and I'll select shift alt and I'll select that star set and I think I'll get the other one here I'm not sure. No I'm not going to do that so what I want to do is actually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the spaceman here and I'll select the NASA here I'll just cut these for one second I'll go ahead and select these stars, move them over here, and I'll just paste those back in for the moment. Now these stars, I'm going to go ahead and change these to a black with a right click just to see how I'm setting them up. And I can see how those are going to be in there. Now if I want to put like a black strip down here, so I can get this down to say black, blue, and red, and use the white of the shirt for the NASA, I can do that. So even if I'm working with a limited number of colors on my press, I can still design at the high end even with two or three colors. Now this is where you get into a huge advantage for the smaller shops because if you're putting designs like this out into your local market and the guy down the street's just working with vector clip art and vector stuff, you're going to blow them out of the water. And really that's what you want to do. You want the stuff, every piece of custom apparel that comes out of your shop is advertising for your business. People are going to be wearing it all over town. Where'd you get those t-shirts, etc.? You get something out there that's got serious hardcore pop on it and blows people away your business is going to grow because people are just going to be so impressed they can't believe it we're getting Walt Disney quality style designs from the screen printing shop and the guy Joe down the street he's working with Corel and he's just doing vector stuff with vectors clip art and these monstrous uh, mascots etc and you're coming out with all this high-end stuff and here we are setting it up and literally in minutes I mean this is truly some revolution revolutionary stuff I know in my own work the level at which I could work has just gone right up through the ceiling and you can see it in the new videos here with the simple steps raster but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and we'll leave this as a white and we'll go ahead and group this I want to go to view wireframe just so I can see this when I set up this vector object and I'm gonna bring this and we're just gonna come right down through here with a vector rectangle just like that and we're gonna fill that with black and we're gonna send that right to the back of the page we'll go order and we'll go to back of page and I'm going to go back to View Enhance. I just wanted to see where I was setting that up. And there's my stars. Now I'm looking at this. 
And I think I might want some more effect in here. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this. And I bring these over here and these over here. Kind of like that. And I'll take this vector rectangle now and I'm going to go ahead and do something. So I'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, and I'll put an effect on this. RGB is fine. I'll go to bitmaps, I'll go to creative, and I'll go to frame. And I'm going to go ahead and preview that. And you can make some modifications over here in the Modify tab if you want to. Go ahead and preview that. I want to get kind of an artistic watercolor look here. And that's going to be fine for me. I'll select OK. And now you can see what we've got here. We're going to have a nice star effect built into this black background. It'll look like something artistic in the background. Go ahead and select all of this here. I'll go to Bitmaps. Convert to Bitmaps. I'm going to select... RGB transparent background. I don't need a transparent background. That'll be okay. And then I'm going to go back to my simple steps raster and I'm going to go ahead and do a monochrome convert on that. And I'll turn that also into a monochrome design asset that I can use and draw. And that'll bring that back in for me. And there we go. And I'll go over here and I'm just going to hold down Alt. I'm going to get rid of these stars here. I probably could have deleted those earlier. Do the same thing here. Hold down Alt. And I got those. We'll go ahead and delete those. This is now monochrome. I'll bring this over here and just kind of set it up on the front of the shirt here. And we'll just right click, order in front of, and I'll click on the t-shirt. And now I would have a three color design. Bring my NASA down here into the left chest a little bit more. Go ahead and select this. I could make my space man a little bit bigger there and set him up on the t-shirt. So from here I could go and create all kinds of different layouts and things with these design assets and it's all pre-separated and ready to go. For example, if I take this graphic that I have here and I go to my other simple steps here and I go to color management, select colors and create selection palette, I can see that I've got black, red, blue and white. Now I can convert this to Pantones here if I want to directly and then go ahead and color separate it coming through my simple steps with our half tone and rip all built right into that. And actually I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here and we'll go ahead and set him up as Pantone color. So I just select a black, a blue, a red, and a white. I click on one click conversion and he becomes Pantone and spot colors. Now that being the case I can go ahead and print him out. So you can see that I could go set this up on a page, print out my separations, what have you, and I've only been working on this for half an hour, and I've created a design that looks like a masterpiece of art that somebody spent hours and hours on, but I did it in only in half an hour. So you can imagine the distinct advantage you're going to have being able to design at this level this quickly to color manage, to color separate, to create design assets, to work your way through client-supplied logos that you're not going to have to vectorize every time you get one which we saw in this tutorial. Now you imagine in the time it would have taken you to vectorize that, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, we went through and created a high-end design. So that's the power of working with Corel Draw, the monochrome bitmaps, the design assets, and our ability to work with raster instead of just vector. And I could mix vector to this also at this point in time if I wanted to directly in Corel Draw. So we'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next session.